Uh, hello everyone, welcome to SIGOF to Skilling, um, the meeting for Monday the 10th of June 2024. Uh, we've got a couple of items on the agenda already. Uh, Rahul, I'm assuming it's you with the Azure VMSs. Yeah. Uh, well, hi everyone, I'm Rahul, I work at Datadog. Um, I just wanted to show this issue. Uh, I'll share my screen. Yeah. So basically, uh, Azure has a maximum of 50 tags per VMSS. Um, and this min and max tag uh, end up taking two out of the 50 slots. Uh, and if you don't, include this min and max tag then autoscaler will just skip it so like i have an example of the code here it checks for the max tag and if it's not specified then it's just going to ignore the vmss um and in a lot of cases you don't really need the min and max tag like uh for example like all our vmsss in a cluster might have the same min and max and at that point we're just adding this min and max tag to every vmss for no reason um, so I was thinking of a couple of different ways to reduce the number of tags and save some space from that 50 tag limit. Um, so I have this first PR where we're just defaulting the min size to zero if it's not specified. Um, I think that's pretty safe to do. Like if someone doesn't specify a min size, it'll just be zero and their VMSS will uh, still be considered by Cluster Autoscaler. And then the second solution I did, um, both of them can technically work. Like you could have both solutions existing at the same time. I just created two different PRs, but um, this copies what uh, GCP does where in the auto discovery config, you have your like auto discovery tag, but you also specify your min and max and that gets applied to all the node groups in the cluster. So uh, in this PR, I'm basically doing the same thing that GCP does where I specify, I specify global min and max and that gets applied to all VMSSs and then you can save two tags that way. Um, so I just, uh, I opened this PR three weeks ago, so I just wanted to get people's thoughts and uh, looking for a review. Uh, I'm just, I'm not sure if we've got any of the Azure maintainers on the call this week. Uh, let me just double check. I think they, they both seem like fairly um, reasonable approaches. I guess with both of them, my immediate thought is what happens to people that are currently not specifying these things um, if these behaviors become the default. Um, so if people don't specify min, uh, or so like for the first PR uh, where we default yeah. to zero, if people don't specify any mins currently, then their VMSSs are just being ignored at the moment. So they just have like these VMSSs that exist on their cluster and are not doing anything. And once this PR were to go in, then tech, theoretically their VMSS would start getting considered uh, okay. but zero. Um, and then the other one, that's more of like a opt-in feature because people uh, yeah. currently just don't have the min and max as part of the discovery. And then once they add it, it'll get applied to all their VMSs by default. But uh, you could still override it. So if people explicitly said it, then it would still get over it. I mean, um, my my gut feel is I probably prefer, uh, I prefer the second approach of like people people explicitly opting in rather than changing behavior underneath them. Um, uh, yeah, I, d I don't think we have any of these your um, owners uh, on the call though. Um, 
I think we can like the the PRs look uh, both sensible enough and easy enough, and but given given it's a um, is your cloud provider change entirely, I think they're, they're the best people to to make that um, decision. Um, have you? Um, I think best best step might be assign both PRs to one person and just have that discussion or potentially have the discussion in the, the issue itself. Um, I think fairly clearly present what the, what the problem is, the couple of the two options. So should hopefully be a fairly quick one. Okay. Do you have any people in mind that I could tag? Uh, Jack Francis or uh, Feskier. Uh, F E I S K Y E R. Um, I mean, anyone really from the provers here? I'll stick in the chat. Okay, thanks. No worries. Thanks for uh, bringing up. Uh, Lay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, yeah, I, I work at Salesforce, and um, I just want to uh, follow up on the issue we uh, opened uh, for uh, issue number 6846. Uh, so uh, we want to implement HA, or rather a uh, more specific uh, leader election for VPA updater and uh, recommender. Uh, we just uh, updated the issue with some more details. Um, yeah, but uh, we we haven't heard any updates. Uh, it's been like uh, three weeks. Uh, just want to follow up and see uh, what do people think. And uh, it looks like we're also getting some traction as well. Like so m many people, uh, for example, Nikki from Grafana also shared the same challenge. Uh, so yeah, it seems like a, a very great uh, feature to have. Yeah, sorry about this. I wanted to um, respond last week, but actually got distracted a bit by some internal issues. Um, I was curious on like comparing to like the current behavior. That's like your benchmark, right? How VPA update and recommend are currently behave, which means like if they get killed for whatever reason, um, the deployment controller will spin up like another pod recommender will reinitialize its history and then go on do some recommendations in the regular loop which it executes like once every minute compared to to this behavior what is your expectation on like what are you trying to improve on i was really curious about this yeah so uh if we only have one replica uh, i know we can spin up multiple instances right for recommender uh probably not for updater uh, but you know, uh, if that one replica goes down for any reason, right? For example, mm -hmm. uh, if we're doing a new deployment, uh, it could, uh, you know, uh, getting some image pull errors, or or something wrong with the node, um, or like uh, Nikki also mentioned, uh, you know, if we're getting um So let's say if it's uh, requiring requiring more uh, memory. Uh, to initialize sometimes, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, uh, we basically have to uh, have someone look into this issue right away, right? Let's say get a pager and someone will respond and, uh, you know, fix the, the problem. Uh, so when we have uh, thousands of clusters, uh, it is not feasible. You know, it's not easy for someone to to to, to fix this right away. Right. We, we really want to uh, look into some other Hibley uh, HA. So basically, uh, we can adjust this issue, right? So like some of the points you mentioned in, in, in these cases, having two instances of it will not really help you, right? You have an image pull error, then like two instances will be not be able to pull an image. Um, if you run, like if you permanently are um killed, then I guess your second instance will also get um killed, right? Once the load moves over. Um, 
I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the reason why I'm asking is, especially the recommender works in a very particular way that um, it does all the stuff in memory. Yeah, mm -hmm. So you now have to like think about, do you want to have like two instances uh, doing the same thing? Um, and like only one of them interacting with the outside world or do you like what what is it that you really want to do and especially given that the recommender like does this only every 60 seconds um the question is like can you wait for the next pot to come up how long does it take for you to spin up a new pot usually that happens in below a minute right um yeah i was just i was just wondering like especially for the recommender and probably for the update in a very similar way. I wasn't really sure what the real benefit of that is, except for like having a checkbox saying this component is, is, is HA, right? Um, I mean, if it's about that, I absolutely understand. I am like, we are having very similar discussions inside our organization as well. But like, if it's really about actually improving the component's behavior, I'm, I'm really curious, like if you're measuring one thing, which of those things do you expect to be like better after you implemented the election? Right. I guess this is what I'm asking. Yeah, I think it's mainly for availability reason, right? Like um, if we um, have single replica, uh, it's mainly, uh, you know, that replica could go, there could be something wrong, right? And then uh, once it goes down, uh, our availability goes down as well. Um, so having multiple replicas, at least uh, you know it can fail over, and uh, you know another inst uh, replica can uh, become let's say uh, a leader, right? Uh, this way, at least we we won't be down, uh, and you know uh, recommender uh, will still doing its thing, right? Uh, uh, let's say create checkpoints or. Uh, you know, uh, have metrics collected. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's just having a high, much higher chance. Uh, you know, if we uh, have only one uh, replica, having multiple replicas, it, it just greatly reduces the the risk of. Uh, you know, either recommender or update are getting impacted. It's uh, and it, it will also help us to avoid a lot of uh, operational toil, right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can really like explain in in other words what I'm trying to uh, to to find out. Um, my feeling is like there will not be a huge improvement for like pretty much every aspect you're looking at this. Um, but okay. Uh, that that that's very interesting. Yeah, maybe maybe if you could give uh, give me some more examples. Uh, why it wouldn't improve, uh, you know, from availability perspective or other perspective, that would be very helpful. Yeah, I guess like availability is only meaningful if you're really missing out on anything that happens, right? I mean, if a component goes down and nothing happens, nobody cares. So like for the recommender, you would care if that component is down for longer than 30 seconds on average, I guess. Yeah, if you, like you have, the recommender does things every 60 seconds and like if it does a thing goes down then you have 60 seconds to bring up a pod and nobody will realize it that it was down i think this is what i'm trying to say like in in most cases nobody will see any effect when that component was down uh, but if you Sorry, just quick response. But uh, let's say if you only have one replica, if it goes down, um, mm -hmm. let's say for UMQ, right? 
uh, because it tries to initialize the component, um, then you could be done for much longer, right? Until somebody recover it. Let's say increase the memory limit. Yeah, well, if I, I mean, if this is what you're caring about, this will also, if like your component fails over, immediately happen to like the other instance. So like, if if you care about recommender could consume more memory, and then like you have static limits on this and it fails, and you have to react on it, this will also happen to your second instance, right? Uh, so you can put VPA under VPA control, for example. Um, this can fix stuff. Um, but HA, like having two instances of recommender will not help you. Here. No, but if you have two instances up at once, if one goes down, the other one's still up. So you don't... Right. You, so but if it, it doesn't matter down, that the first too... one do, can't come back up because the second one is still up. So like, so, yeah, if one were to try to come up now, it'd be OOM killed, but it is still up. So you don't care that it's OOM killed and you can wait till the morning to have the pager guy fix it. Wait, if it gets um killed, it like what will happen you to the second two. instance? Yeah, the second one's still running. Only the one gets um killed because it, it's on a node with memory pressure, but the second one isn't. Oh, you're saying what? Okay, so it's not the component running out of like above right. any memory limit. It's the node that's it's having an issue. Okay. Right. So, I, Marco, I'm hearing your point in that the the VPA components are generally outside of the critical path for most components in Kubernetes. So, having a single replica um, and and being able to replace it very quickly is is a viable solution. But client go and Kubernetes do have leader election APIs, and so I think the the effort to add a leader election API means that users have the ability to have basically a hot standby instead of a cold standby and even for us that's that is not that's not the biggest win in the world for for the problems we're facing but it's 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 getting it, it's it's definitely an improvement for for components that are critical to the operation of the cluster um but i also do see your point that it doesn't fix every possible use case if it gets um, um, um killed because of its own memory consumption, the secondary pod's also going to die as soon as it loads up all those VPAs. So I think yeah. it's, I think it's about protecting, um, about protecting the case when the cluster can't bring up a new pod in replacement. Maybe Docker okay. Hub is down. Maybe I don't know. There's no node capacity or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's about having a hot standby instead of bringing up a new one. Um, that's just my two cents of the case. Yeah, absolutely. So I absolutely agree that for this very specific error scenario where you cannot bring up a new pod for whatever reasons in your cluster, um, then absolutely leader reaction is uh, very helpful. Um, I still think that for like most, if not all other cases, uh, it shouldn't make a difference that anybody actually uh, realizes. But sure, I mean, like, we can add leader election and then people can decide on if they're willing to pay the price for a second replica for um, whatever uh, return of that investment they, they want to see. There's, there's also the opposite case, and we actually struggle with this, is we assumed you could run multiple recommenders and updaters. And so we did. And I think it's... Yeah the a user's normal assumption is you can run more than one replica um and so leader election will stop them from getting into a bad situation by having mm -hmm. a single pod so mm -hmm. on the flip side i think it makes the vpa more usable as well yeah that's a fair, that's a fair point absolutely mm -hmm. just thought marco this is also how uh, we 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 do for all control planes, uh, for all controls on our site, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think the main point is, uh, for example, in a multi-zonal cluster, uh, if one, one zone goes down, uh, yeah, the, the second replica can take over uh, the leader, the leadership and can start acting right away. 
Yeah, I guess that's also some sort of case where, like, for whatever reasons, you cannot create a pot where, like, in mm -hmm. some location, right? Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for your inputs. Yeah, so currently, um, the whole, like, uh, recommended updater are not using, for example, a controller runtime, right? Um, and they use like handcrafted clients and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it makes sense to maybe look at that first and then like take the easy, uh, like reap the benefits of this and just integrate the lead election stuff. So client client Go does seem to have leader election built into it, and there's an example in the library as well. So maybe it's worth exploring that. All right. Sounds good as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, Lee, um, if you're like really interested in helping out here, I guess we would appreciate like any. PRs for this and then uh, can take a look at that stuff. I don't think um, that like people otherwise will get to it quickly. Uh, sure. I, I mean, I, I can sh uh, certainly uh, try to take a look. Uh, is there someone I should, uh, can reach out uh, regarding this? Um, yeah, I guess if you have any like, questions or uh, problems or whatever, then you can just raise a draft PR or like uh, ping us in the issue or something or like get back here. Okay. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks very much. Um... That was all we had on the agenda. Is there anything else anyone wants to raise this week? I shall take that as a no. Cool. Thanks very much, everyone, for your input, and uh, see you all next week. <laughs>